Just like other animals, corals need to have sex to make babies. They release all their eggs and sperm into the open water at exactly the same time. But in the water, the eggs and sperm can last only a few hours. So coral sex has to be perfectly timed among thousands of corals, along hundreds of kilometers. The natural seasonal cycles set the time, like the warming of the water before the summer, the phase of the moon, or the hour of the sunset. But the oceans are changing dramatically, getting warmer, more acidic, and more polluted. Will these changes affect the ability of corals to tell time and reproduce successfully? Most corals spawn during the summer months after the sunset. So starting in 2015, I've been entering the sea every summer evening and documenting any reproductive activity I could see. On many of these nights, I spent up to six hours silently waiting. What I was waiting for was those unique moments that I knew supposed to happen only once a year. A couple of summers later, some disturbing patterns began to emerge. Some corals were now spawning on many different nights, over one or even up to two months, but every night only a few of them would spawn. This means that the chances that these tiny few eggs would even meet sperm in the big ocean and get fertilized are extremely low. This fact absolutely intrigued us. We had to get to the bottom of that mystery and investigate beyond the common reports in the literature. Throughout every reproductive season, we sampled the corals that we studied. We took small branches, brought them to the lab, and dissected them to find out their reproduction. How many eggs, what were their sizes, and so on. So now we could quantify all the observations that we have seen in the field, and indeed, that only strengthened our conclusion of the breakdown of the synchrony of coral reproduction. So the question that arises now is, why this phenomenon silently threatens the health of the reef? Are these species going to go extinct? To investigate this, we mapped different areas of the reef containing thousands of corals and visited these areas every year to track the changes in the coral community. How many corals had died and how many new juvenile corals had joined the reefs? After a few years, we started to see the full picture. Many coral species in the reefs of Elat were still spawning right on time and we were able to find juvenile corals of those species. But for those one in which we found the breakdown in spawning synchrony, we were not able to detect even one juvenile coral. It seemed that they were not able to produce any new generation. What exactly is causing this breakdown in synchrony and how common it is elsewhere in the world remains to be explored. Is it because of global warming? Pollution? Until we pinpoint the exact cause, these findings serve as a timely wake-up call. We need to start looking deeper into the challenges to coral survival. But this is not all bad news. Identifying such early warning signs can help direct our future research and conservation efforts towards the very species that are at potential risk of extinction long before they show any visible sign of decline.